So, I'll give you a little bit about projects today. Um, I'll give you a little bit about projects today, and then we'll uh, talk more about fundamentals. What I'm calling fundamentals, which is this kind of background on uh, things like emergence, statistical mechanics, you know, theories of you know, going from micro to many successfully. Uh, where we are now, so okay, with the Beetlejuice thing. Uh, at some point, depending on how all this works out, there's still a good number of you in this class, which is wonderful, which is entirely my plan. Um, uh, we may, I, we'll probably want to have groups, I think, for, for projects. But again, this is something to sort of figure out. Usually we have at uh, one of these classes, we have uh, quick talks, which depending on the size, can be a minute, two minutes, three minutes long. I don't know if you've done those sorts of talks, they're good talks. They take some preparation, right? It's not, you're not here for an hour to talk, but you've got to do it well. Um, so, okay, cool. And that's sort of a warm up, it's about what you plan to do, and that's usually very interesting for everyone involved, right? Because you get to see this whole smorgasbord of fun things that people work on. And hopefully, you know, it gets somewhere with it later on. Uh, so, the final exam period, that's the idea too. We come back and we give short talks again about some aspect of. Of how things uh, how things went, which could be it was a disaster <laughs> because science. Okay, but we'll, that's not the other point. Okay, so um, all right, so I was going to go over a few things here. What else do I have here? Okay, this is my advisor from MIT, so this is not a fun uh, story, but he's been studying the carbon uh, cycle for a long time over, of course, you know, geological time scale. So. Now has a story that uh, the, the oceans may have enough carbon for a six mass extinction. So you can read his fun stories. It's Dan Mothman. He's a great guy. He's very meticulous. That's a story there. Um, I'll get to this later on. I'm going to come back to this. This is part of the data set that I want to tell you about. I'll tell you about that. Okay, so just a few things before I talk about projects. So this is, so obviously, unbelievably terrible thing happened yesterday which unfortunately we've had to say more often than not. This is our hedonometer, you know, there are many ways to look at all this, because there's tons of news and so on. But this is, in a sense, the voice of Twitter, collectively, bots and all, uh, going back to 2000, before 2009. And so yesterday now marks the worst thing we've seen in terms of positivity. So this is a 1-9 scale, 1 means completely negative, 9 means completely happy, it's like a, uh, so 5 is neutral, so it's like a, um, Two Likert scales, or two, if you like, this is where we are, two five star scales stuck together, right? One is about how happy it is, one is how negative it is. It's very hard for things to go below neutral, as it turns out. And we had a big paper a few years ago in PNAS talking about this that there is a universal um, positivity bias across 10 very diverse languages, 24 corporate around the world. So that was sort of a surprising finding, but it's this is Pollyanna story. That, our language in general actually has more positive than negative problems. And that's true of real words and um, common, common words. Anyway, but so some sections of, say, Harry Potter would go below five, some sections of um, some you know, death metal and so on would go below five. But this, so this is uh, pretty terrible. And um, let's see, the last few months. So you can zoom in on these things. It has this, if I could do it, I don't know what's wrong with my. Okay. That's this thing. So they've all happened in the last year, actually, the sort of the worst things we've seen, right? So the, it was actually um where is it? Uh that's not on the plane. Sorry. So the Pulse nightclub attack was the lowest. Then there's the Dallas police officers. And then the third lowest until recently was uh, actually the day after Trump was elected. And you can go in and look at, you know, this is, this is a particular, this is Twitter, right? So you'll see, these are comparing the seven days before, this is Trump, right? So one, America, there are, these are positive words being used more. The blue ones here are negative words being used more, and the yellow ones are positive words being used less. That's, I mean, that gives you a sense of what Twitter's like now. Um, and of course, we've had, we, I've talked about it, I know, in the past, you know, that Charlottesville is here, uh, and, and it's been very rocky recently. All sorts of things have happened. We've had the hurricanes. I will, I will say that Hurricane um, Maria, right? So we had 
Harvey, Irma, and Maria. So Maria doesn't really, it's in, it's in there, the words are in there, but it doesn't actually, um, it doesn't uh, create a negative spike, right? So there's Harvey, which again, not super low, that's uh, Irma, but also the repeal of DACA. So there were these two, two things going on that day. Um, and then, you know, so this is, we, no one wants to read 10 million tweets, but this is, this is kind of the texture of all those tweets. So there's, you know, there are positive things on one side. Vegas is actually a word that people ask in isolation, will give a positive assignation to. Of course, families, prayers, praying, right? So these words are up here. There are some things that are not being talked about as much, and, and the negative words are being not, right? So there's less tax, there's less hurricane. People use tax. <laughs> What's that? Oh, sorry. So, so let me just say, these are negative words that are being talked about less. There are four ways words can change, right? So there are positive words that are being used more. And your response is exactly the, the story, right? So all these things are positive words being used more, but it's hard to read. Um, you know, and obviously some of the music and concert are in a bad context. Oh, yeah, that's and, and these are negative words. So hurricanes being used less, right? So that's what's drifted off. And then the negative stuff is this. Um, you know, the game partly eventually is to get at the stories, you know, how people are talking about this. Are they unified or do they start to you know, break into different frames? There's, there are, there's evidence that um, people were trying to manufacture alternate narratives around this immediately, basically. So you said that this is Twitter for the United States, right? Uh, it's actually all English tweets, but it's dominated by the US. Okay. And so we have lots of different visualizations, but this is just sort of the front one we can show. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have bots cleaned up or whatever. But anything that's, yeah. So Could there be the potential that we haven't seen a large reaction to Hurricane Maria because of Puerto Rico's large loss of the internet? If you, True, but if you look at the Spanish version, which we don't have up at the moment, um, yeah, you, you might see more of a dip on that as well. Although even with Harvey, it wasn't a huge thing. I mean, people are talking about it, it's just that it didn't push it down as much as <coughs> some of these other events, such as, you know, say Charlottesville, right? That was a yeah. terrorist attack in Manchester, that was the um, Grande uh, concert, you know, that was... Shocking at the time, so that pushed things down. There was no terror attacks in London. The fire, actually, the, the tower. You know, these things really grab people's um, uh, attention. So, uh, I, don't, I don't know what else. I mean, it's just a. I know it's a terrible thing to talk about. Uh, this is. I show you now and then. You know, you have to. This is how we set up things in the background. They have all these structures, but you have to annotate it now and then. We we link it to. Of the Wikipedia page that's relevant to a major event. So these are all the major events. So generally they're holidays where everyone says happy things mostly, and then they're terrible things you don't expect. Um, okay. So we've done that. Okay, this is stuff that I want to get to in a little bit. I don't know why this isn't working. Okay. Um all right, so I'll come back to finding stuff about these events in a little bit. But, so how are we going? I want to talk about projects. Um, do you find usually the things that are more like politically charged and then drop back to the uh, communist? Are they strong? I don't know. The, the, the negative events are a real mixture. You know, there are deaths of celebrities. There are sometimes when um, someone leaves, you know, one direction. That can hurt. That hurts people. <laughs> Justin, Bieber, Justin Bieber is arrested. You know, so it's absurd, but we have Justin Bieber is arrested, annotated, you know, Boston bombing. I mean, it's unbelievable, right? It's just unbelievable. But, uh, so, I mean, it, it, and this is over, maybe overused, but I, and I think there's a good meta talk about this, but it's uh, Anna, the first line of Anna Karenina, depending on how you translate it, but happy families are all the same, and sad families are sad in their own special ways. Which Jared Diamond used for guns, germs, and steel, right? This is the Anna Karenina. Um, mechanism or hypothesis that for things to go well, you need all these things lined up, right? and just one of them missing, and all falls apart. And for the for the civilization, it's you know you don't have our plant or like a plant that you can you know you got train into being a good plant for you, like rice or animals that you can domesticate or you know, weather is good enough. Yeah, you, know, you, you could have all these pieces, it's just you're missing one, and you're toast. And we do have more. 
No, it's sort of composed with another other, uh, a number of other aspects. You know, we have more negative emotions. We don't express them all the time, but they're more, you know, there's fear, anger, disgust, sad. These are different things. Happiness is a little more just rainbow and unicorns. It's just sort of like, there are, there are a billion types of happiness. Um, this surprise, which is another team member, it's weird. It didn't make it to um, Inside Out. Right? They only had five of them. They didn't have surprise. Oh, what happened? Surprise. Probably surprise. And this is sort of a classic thing. Six, there's six um, emotions, and they're in your face. That's the thing. They're expressed through your face. You can tell someone's expressing these things. So Apple will know when you open your own phone if you're happy or sad. If they know it's you. Okay. Anyway, but that's, uh, you know, it's just there, there are manifold ways for terrible things to happen. This is, which may, may not seem super surprising, but it's an important um, system story, really. Uh, yeah. This is going to come up, so I've got it on the screen. I'm just going to show you. This is an interesting thing. I know, actually, I mentioned this to a colleague the other day, and I know they're working on this, but this is a plot. It's from Bloomberg News uh, a couple of years ago, and it was in response to the kind of growing, uh, um, the potential transition for uh, legalization of marijuana. Right? So that they went back and looked at uh, these things. So this is the number of states in the US, which is a economic conservative number, so that's important. Um, it's been a long time to realize Hawaii 5 was about the number when I was a kid. Anyway, so uh, these, are the, these are the number of states that are for or against something, right? So this is, I think this is prohibition. Yeah, prohibition here, right? So these are states that have prohibition. And actually, this is an unusual one, right? Where they start to actually go, the majority you can, and then, and then it goes away completely. Um, you see abortion, you know, this is a, and, and the, thing, the thing about this is a sort of different time scale, right? This is rapid here, but relatively, um, uh, this is an interracial marriage, right? Which has this very long history, and then there's a somewhat rapid change, and then it's legalized. Um, uh, and this is gay marriage, right? So that's a, another, the most recent major kind of thing like that. And uh, this is from 2015, so I don't know how many states this is legal. Yeah. Do you know? Uh, volume is low. Oh, volume is low, okay. <laughs> I just want to show you, I mean, it's an amazing visualization as well, right? So this is, you can see how things change over time. So you can see, uh, these are the ones that are allowed, right? So this is, you have to think about whether they're allowed or disallowed. So prohibition, um, these are dry states, right? So there's, a, there's some, if I can get that one to work again, they're a bit confused, right? If you look at this, so the Northeast, kind of maybe, they're not sure, and then suddenly they're like, yes, no more drinking, and then yes, lots of drinking. <laughs> uh, voting for women. So, you know, very different patterns. This is more, this is more the West, this is the West. Vermont. Vermont on the table. Uh, watching different things, so these are banning, right? So, uh, and this is gay marriage, right? So that, that moves in a diff completely different pattern. All right, and then I guess we're here. <laughs> but this could be updated. Right? I think there are more. Yeah. Mass. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? I think the answer is thinking about it as well. Right, so that, I mean, it's just a, and then you and then you look at these things. Does it, and how fast has America changed its mind? So this, and just do it again. I mean, it's a. I don't know if you can if you can tell broad stories about this, but interesting. All right, that's what that was. Okay. So uh, projects. So I'm just going to go through some possible things, and really, it's sort of a chance to talk about some science, I suppose, as well, and. Um, some of these things are old, and I'll sort of point, you know, students have worked on them enough that maybe we don't do it. So the idea would be, uh, the introduction of the project, where you, where you talk, these are quick things, there really is two minutes, there's a, you know, you get pulled off the stage. Um, these are just rough estimates, to be honest. Um, it depends. You'd have a report, sort of, and or some on online visualization, depends what you're working on, and, and I'll, I'll say in a second, it's more about that. Uh, GitHub is a good place to put your things, and of course you can also put in github.io, you can put, uh, you can put up a page, you can put up data work visualizations. 
Uh, for some of you, you know, if you're going into data science or in that kind of world, this is a good thing to have as you leave uh, UVM, which you will do. Uh, and as you leave UVM, you want this, you know, this thing to show, but this part is a portfolio. You have resumes and CVs and references and all these things, but if you've got this other piece that you can show people, I think that's going to be more and more powerful uh, as time goes on. So teams of two or three, of course, one is fine as well, um, but I think max maybe three. Uh, I, we haven't had teams as much in the past, but I, I, I sort of endorse it. So the goals can be really, this is very broad, this is very crazy, people do ridiculous things and that's fine. Um, but say if you're an undergraduate or you're really not sure about what to do, you can work on a paper, some published work, and I'll sort of touch on many that we just really go through and figure it out, right? Really work out what's going on. Uh, maybe I mentioned this the other day, I mean, there's, there's great work in doing this for the sake of science and your own knowledge. Uh, there was a, you know, a student doing this sort of thing at UMass Amherst in an economics class who ended up on Colbert because they didn't mention that. Oh, no. Just, I had a question about the journal style, is that you have a template or something? Yeah, I do, yeah, yeah. universal template. Yeah, I'll give you that. But I just mean, you know, like two columns, it's a nice thing. Looks like it has an abstract in the title. Yeah. Okay. Looks papery. Yes. Which, you know, I mean, it's silly now. I mean, there should be apps, but anyway. Um, no, you, you, need to, you need to deliver in different modes, right? So, you know, paper document, great thing. The flashy thing over here that works on your phone or whatever, also good. Um, yeah, and it could then be a research thing, right? Where you really, you know, you, maybe you're already got a program and you're working on it, or it's a new thing you want to start. Some crazy ideas, that's fine. Uh, so I have some ideas about how to tell stories. So this is something, there's a, there's a post that I have up online. So, you know, ultimately, if you've got a really well-established um, body of knowledge that you've produced, you need to be able to deliver it on all of these levels, I think, right? So, you know, there's the sort of uh, paragraph, which is like your elevator pitch type thing. You need to be able to give it a great title, you need to be able to give it a one, two, three words. Provost just asks us for that, for a center of excellence ideas, just for me, just before. I mean, it's exactly the right way of thinking about it. You need to be able to uh, compress it. Uh, and a lot of, you know, my story, I suppose, is that a lot of people end up living out here for a while, especially graduate students, right? They're roaming around in the chapter thing. You say, you know, what are you working on at Thanksgiving? And then three hours later, you've been told what chapter four is. You know, not the right. You're really trying to get the, uh, what's the stuff that makes you go to sleep? The, yeah, well, the thing in the turkey, you're trying to get in there. Hoping to God. But, um, so don't do that. So you, but you need to be able to operate these scales and also understand uh, the delivery. And these are my little drawings, right? This is the madness. This is sort of the thing that has nothing that backs it up. It's a good little sound bite, but it's just on top of froth. Um, but you want that sort of scaling story thing here. Yeah. So, yeah, my old friend Markov, I mentioned at the start of this course, as he was doing rounds for um, you know, being, becoming a medical student, they kept, people in charge kept saying, you know, what is medicine, what is medicine, and eventually ended up with patent recognition, which was a, not an unusual distillation of what they were doing. Okay, showed you this. This is just so many things about it. I mean, there's just so much that is out there and is available and is, you know, data rich, especially about social phenomena. I do like stories, so I'm going to mention these things. Uh, we do have all of the books from this Happy Trust data set, so this is millions of books sitting on the back. All sorts of things could happen there, and I was just going to show you a couple of things. This is from Wikipedia, this is on GitHub, it's a, uh, it's just, they've, they've gone through and just sucked out all the plots, right? So if you have a movie, it's got a Wikipedia page, and there'll be a plot section. Plot. So that's just an interesting data set, right? Because one of the how do you get out the plot of a book? You know, if you've got a book and you feed it into your little machine contraption you made, how does it pop out the plot? We've done work where we get out the emotional art, but you want to get out the plot. Is this a kill the monster type plot, like Beowulf, or is this you know, a romance? Like, how, how, do you, how do you get that out? We need to do that. Um, just because Isaac Asimov told us to. Right, so uh, I have a couple other things, so I go this group. We do have a paper actually on, um, it's not published yet, and I've got to resubmit it resubmitted, but it's on school shootings and shootings in general. And it does seem that social media has some, I meant to mention it before, it has some, uh, not causal effect, but you know, you can see, 
you can see that there are correlations, right? So there are sometimes gaps between these events, or um, bunchings and so on, that seem to connect with mentions of things on, you know, in the news and on Twitter. Okay. Anyway, so I was going to show you. This is okay. This I meant to say this before. This is a this is a claim that mass shootings are contagious, and I wanted to say they're probably not. Uh, but it, but let me I guess let me finish what I was going to say with that, which is that um, I know I'm at the wrong spot. That's why this was. That's why I'm wrong. Uh, sorry. Okay. Um, I mean, obviously. Well, well part, of, part of what makes these things work is stories, right? The lone wolves are em emulating other lone wolves, right? And they, they do that overtly, they, they document that. Um, you know, there is a story and a narrative that they take on, and that needs to be dealt with. We will talk about that at the end of the semester, actually, um, the stories. Okay, so this is the wiki plots thing. Turn it up, go and have fun. Yeah, yeah, Python. Uh, I want to show you, I think it's here. Okay, so here's a simple thing that was done with this Hathi Trust, or with one of these large book sets. I'll just give you a simple example. Right, so narrative time means take a book, Moby Dick, take all the words in order, just lay them out, and then you've got zero to 100%, right? This is halfway through the book, that's all it means. So I don't about chapters or anything like that, just, and then rescale them all so they're all the same length. Well, they all fit on the 0 to 100, and then bend the words that appear. And then what they've done here is bend the words. So, this is the word dead. This is where it appears relatively within books. A very simple thing to do. You do with two grams, three grams, you can play around with that, which just means, which is a funny way of saying two words or three words stuck together, right? So, sort of makes sense, right? Well, death towards the end. And then, had a lot of fun with the whole thing, so this is looking at it again. Fine. So this is athletic, this is a like description, irony seems to be everywhere. Um, let me get to these ones. I think these are these are ones that are um, most biased in a sense, right? So college, you know, it's back here, right? So there's a little bit at the end, but mostly it's telling you about school and so on and university, the sort of setting stages um, of stories, right? So that the framing and things that end up it's just a little fun thing that came out. It's a lie. Okay. Um, these things are grow at the other end, right? So, no. guilty, right? Point at the end. Evidence. Point, right? This is sort of the, you know, the end, dying at the end, right? All these things. Suffering increases throughout the books. Um, you know, you have to be careful. You don't want to pull one out and just say this is this is everything. But killed, you know, flames. There's joy at the end as well, it just gets more emotional, basically. Um, but it sort of makes sense. So it's just a, it's, this is just a blog post from uh, you know, some characters in Stanford. Books, this is a huge collection of books. Oh, okay. I thought it was just Moby Dick. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. Millions, millions and millions of books. Millions of books. Okay. Millions of books. We always use Moby as a... This one, I think, yeah, you're right. This one will be from some data set that I'm not sure about. It was 27. 27. So you have to be careful, and you know, we had some trouble with that. So making sure you've got books that really are just novels, or you know, not dictionaries or bunches of short stories. I mean, if you just start ripping off Gutenberg, it would be like you know, my my trip to the Seychelles. You know, those someone's journals. So you have to be a little bit, a little bit careful with that. It's true. It's some, it's some encyclopedias. The emotional arc of the encyclopedia. Actually, has anyone seen um, Black Adder? Ink and Incapability. I showed this to one of my daughters the other day. It's where you get Samuel Johnson, Ink and Incapability, and then he's going to sponsor the dictionary. I mean, it's really Samuel Johnson. <laughs> and the idiot says, so it's going to be a ripping, you know, like there's some murders in here, and whatever it's been. Right. If you haven't watched Black Adder, please, my God, go and enjoy it. Um, Ah, uh, wow. Incredible. Uh, it's Brian Ackman somewhere who's actually funny. Okay, so, uh, and he says words. Okay. So lots of possibilities, that's what that link is. Lots of things. This is an old plot that I made years ago to sort of establish that Twitter was people actually talking about what was going on. So this is you know, 24 hours over many, many days, and we're just bidding uh, how often words appear in those particular hours, and 
you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So they're talking about well, Twitter. Twitter handles are talking about things. So there are lots of things. We have we have this enormous Twitter data set. You've seen part of. You know, we've done many things with it now. We've looked at how people talk about climate change with respect to say. Um, Massive uh, events like uh, Katrina and Sandy, you know, there were these two sort of insults to society, like what, how do people talk about things after that? They, did, they definitely changed, actually. Uh, uh, Black Lives Matter, we had some, uh, one of our students who's just gone after the Northeastern, worked on um, how people talked about that and, and the, the protest and the counter protest and the hashtags and so on, how these things sort of uh, track with each other. So there are lots of specific things to work on, you know. Uh, we did have this one paper that's not published yet, but it shows that, and I mentioned this before, if you look at words around a topic, you can measure ambient happiness, right? So if we had Obama, look at all the words around uh, Obama in every tweet that came through to us, we get 10% of all tweets um, on Obama, and you could show that the happiness of that score uh, predicted the um, his, uh, general popularity, down the poll type popularity by a quarter, right? So it's three months ahead. Interesting. Um, hopefully this link works, but there are many, many papers that we've talked about in uh, our reading group, which we now call the Paper Shredder. It's not only in the semester. We actually have a shredder. <laughs> and if the paper is not liked, then it gets shredded. Um, <laughs> we actually did do that once, it was very funny. And, uh, but I think some people felt bad. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was naughty. But the joke is that that's how academics behave because it is how they behave. Like, wow, this is no good. My work is much better. Blah blah blah. blah. Um, so that's what we call that. But so if you're taking a seat, that's what I'd like to say we are living in. Um, this is probably too much, of course, but this is this old thing about what I call the play project, which is play and crunch, right? So people are play, also others, and crunch is the computer thing. So uh, anything that involves I'm just going to flash these things up. StoryFinder is actually a project we're working on. David Dewhurst, as the assistant deliberator, is uh, partly in charge of this. is a very raw thing that's just come out recently. You won't be able to see this, but this is August 12th of this year. Which was what happened? Does anyone remember that? Didn't. Okay, that was Charlottesville. And this is a measure of entropy, Shannon's entropy, which we've just talked about. And so there's some background kind of stuff that's to do with, okay, so here's the number of unique words. This is the number of, because it's a total number of words, number of unique words. This isn't labeled probably, but I think it's number of unique words. So this is, uh, you know, there are less tweets during, the, right, there's a daily cycle, there's a diagonal cycle. Uh, so there are actually some less unique words around here on the 12th. Uh, this is the total number of tweets. The number of tweets actually was going up that was a Saturday, that was a Sunday, it was my spoon. Um, it wants to be used. And, uh, and so entry, you have to think about entry a little bit because it's going to be uh, tied to this uh, in ways we have to unpack properly. This is the sort of marches on the Friday, you can start to see some kind of aberrations. So entry actually went down. This is, you know, when the, this is about the time when the um, woman was killed, when the vehicular attack. Uh, and, and what that means is, there's actually less surprise, which seemed to odd, maybe, if you think about it. But when you think about entry, everyone's talking about the same thing at this point. That's what it means. But right? everyone has started to like, coalesce around a story. So if you see that the thing drop, it's getting more and more frozen around a particular uh, topic. Particular well, topics are another thing, you need to be careful with that. Um, you know, the, the word ecology is shrinking, things like that as well. Uh, and, and this is, you know, so you could have, if this was in real time, you know, you have this thing that spits out and says, so this is something we've been working on for a long time. Um, you know, we did have it running for the Boston Marathon bombings, and you could see it, you could actually see, it actually produced the address of the second brother on the Friday before that became public knowledge. So it was floating around on Twitter. People were tweeting a little bit, but um, it was not, it was being shut down by all the broadcasting. It, would pop, it popped out of a little signal, you know, half an hour now before it became one well more. Anyway, that's that's a raw thing, but this is to show you the kind of stuff we're trying to get to. Old idea, six of Wikipedia, made a, have a Twitter feed for it. But it was, you know, replace the Wikipedia with six word 
six word descriptions. So famously, there's a six word novel idea by Hemingway. Claim that have a challenge, I mean, it may be a part be a challenge, like you write novels in six words, and people play around with this, they have reviews in four words, or reviews in six words, you can see that sort of thing. Um, it's a good game, but it fits into that scaling thing for stories. Uh, and his was not great, it, I mean, not, not, it's not a happy one. It's um, for sale, baby shoes, never worn. So it's bad. So, you know, like a lot of poetry and so on, where you are involved very much in the creation of the story, right? And it lists it, it gets in there and goes smack to your head around a little bit, and narratives start pouring off. Um, so, uh, it's, it's you have an air storage on this book. No, so sad. Well, Oh, I can't. You know, it's okay. Total disaster. I should I upgraded to High Sierra. No idea. Okay. And it exploded. Um, uh, 6 p.m. So it's a thing. You know, so this has all sorts of possibilities. We started building, I don't know, crazy. Um, sort of a creativity thing there as well, because you have people competing for the best description. Okay, uh, so what I call socio-technical phenomena, I mean, this is a term that I've used for a long time. I think I've heard more and more people use it, socio-technical. You do see sometimes techno-social, which I think is wrong, which we should at least keep us in front while we're still in charge. Um, so this is, so, so this is, and we'll see some more of this as we go along, of course, but this has been a, this has been a great example of people plus computers doing a good thing. This has happened forever, right? People plus technology doing something together. The markets are essentially that, right? Of course, they're being, you know, algorithms are more and more dominating all of these things. But uh, traditionally, it's been this sort of mixture of people making these kind of gut decisions or hunch type decisions, because we were also call this, I call it plain crunch, but we also call it hunch and crunch because it rhymes. Um, so if you don't know about this, so this was a paper that eventually ended up in nature. Uh, it, it was like a SETI, right? So SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, because we gave up on finding it on Earth, so um, it has to be somewhere in the universe. So the idea there was, let's set up this little program so you can download it and run it, and let, let your computer, while it's not doing anything, uh, help out this, help, help out science, right? By processes and stuff. So this is the same idea here, protein folding, very difficult problem. Very hard to understand how these two because the protein go and it's very happily does some crazy origami thing and it goes like that. And you're sitting there as a scientist going, what? So and it's hard to simulate it. Um, of course, you know, we know what they end up as, we know we stretch around and do them. So this was a little game that you know, it's doing this 3D folding, and you could watch so the little gift they gave you was you could watch it happen on your computer, right? So that's sort of fun. You could see this thing struggling with itself. But people got frustrated actually, and they wrote in, you know, they wrote in, so this thing is, what is it? it's an idiot. Obviously, the rabbit goes under the hole through the whatever that is, right? Um, so it evolved, and, and it, I think the UW people um, started to think, well, maybe we can get the people. Let's get the people involved. And so uh, eventually, algorithms and recipes came through from people who you know, did their own thing. And so the computer's still working, you can make all sorts of like little fine grained things. But now and then these big steps were made by people. So, really interesting. Um, you know, Google socio-technical search, people plus computers. Um, I mean, at least in the original thing. Zooniverse is pretty awesome. Uh, captures, right, the little captures where you see a word that's messed up and you have to guess what it is. Originally that was done to just you know, get, uh, to help with people logging in, to make it more secure. Now I guess you just press a button. I don't really understand that, but like, right? What? It does anyone know what's going on with that? It tracks where you your mouse does and you need it for you. Oh, right. And it's not, it's not messed up at all. Okay, all right. Thank you. I didn't know that. Okay, so six second or six word description. No, it's really, it's really good. It's just not as good. You know. So, um, well, I, I mean, because I've gone through a few stages where it used to be just this messed up word that a computer made, and you know, so that's what it is, and you. Thing and, stuff. But, and then there you have two words, and the second one was from one of these texts that Google or some other uh, entity had been uh, uh, scanning, right? And it gets to a funny looking thing that's an S that looks like an F or whatever, and it's not sure, and it spits the word out and says, 
I need people to help me. Right? So you get a bunch of evaluations from people, and they're actually just doing it as a recapture. So that was a kind of a clever distributed computation thing. Um, people mess with that because they're terrible. Um, uh, I think that people would send them off to something else where someone else would do something for some nasty reward and um, that's not ESP game. So this is Luis Bonan, who's who created Duolingo, right? Learning languages. Um, sort of his great contribution to the world, really. Uh, he, he first, he was a computer scientist at CMU, and maybe still is actually, and he uh, came up with this idea that it was for image uh, uh, annotation, which is really hard, right? Traditionally, it's been a hard thing, and now it's been a long way. But you have an image, and it has a cat, and you know, some frogs, and whatever, and computers make terrible assertions of that as a triangle. You know, it's obviously a cat. Um, so the idea was two people, like, a bit like Family Feud, I suppose, would, uh, you, you know, you don't see them, they're on a computer somewhere else, and they're entering words, and if, you, if your, your words match up, then you both win, right? So your incentive is actually to, say the most obvious things, not to put in rude things or be bad. Actually quite cleverly got away from that. So it's the ESP game. So it was, that was pretty good, people really enjoyed it. Anyway, that was sort of a start of what I think of all of these kind of nice computation things that people are doing. Um, so that, there's a lot there. There's just a ton, that's just a few things. And they call that public, it's a good name. Um, how people move around, this has been a really interesting thing to see develop over the last a bit over 10 years now. Uh, this study is from mobile phones. This is Fabrazi's group. Um, they were at Northeastern when they did this, I think. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it got all this data from a phone company that really basically read some of their work, you know, some of the sort of exciting work about networks, and said, we'd like to give you all this data, just do whatever you want with it, no strings attached, basically. And no one knows what, this is one of these, this has been a difficult transition for science. No one knows publicly where this data is from, which company, where it is in the world, somewhere in Europe, I think. But you, if you have some of the data, so you can start to figure it out, because where cities must be, you know, you could, you could do some sleuthing like that. It's very hard to anonymize these big data sets, especially if there's network data, right? It's a very unsolved, kind of horrible, horrible problem. Um, so people will say, you know, I've de-anonymized it, blah, 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 the whole thing, but people can reconstruct it very strongly. You know, it's not just where the city's out, but there could be an event, right? People start calling a lot around events, especially in emergencies and so on, so you could easily you know, back things up. But one of the things here was to find how people move around. And there's actually a zip floor story for that, um, which is usually this is sort of rank of the places you go to in terms of frequency on a log log plot, how long, and um, at the top is home, then work, and then what sociologists actually call for many, for decades, the third place. Starbucks is one of its initial stories was to be the third place, right? They read some books. Like, we want to be the third place. Kind of up, and they, and they truly are for some people, right? Um, you know, if August 1st doesn't want to be, because right, they won't let you use like that. Yeah. The hate. <laughs> Deny it. Right. No laptops. Deny it. Um, Obscure reference. Okay. But right, they don't want to be. They want to make the fifth place and sixth place. Yeah. But people, so some people frequent two places. Some people frequent five. Some people, you know, and you kind of have to put them all together and you start to see this. Is it four? Okay. You're going to. Oh, there is. I said there's like August versus. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a few. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny, right? So. I like Bob Fiber. I was like looking for a place to work once, and I had lots of like three that were all like that. It's <laughs> like, where are we work? No pictures of your food, either. Yeah. Well, my friends do that. We will, we will burn your phone. <laughs> Please don't advertise that for me. Uh, okay, so, so this is super interesting, and it showed this kind of universal pattern. We had uh, Morgan Frank, who's now with us two days of the week again, who's at the Media Lab, Old Story Lab. Remember, he just spoke on Monday, so we moved there, I think. Um, he did work with Twitter on how people move around and expressed happiness. So we grow fonder as we wander is sort of the story, but people are a little bit more positive when they're further away from home, or if they travel more. And he was able to reproduce the overall kind of universal movement patterns that, that they saw here from phones. So, super interesting. This is a work by um, Dirk Brockman, 
Um, where's George? Anyone heard of this? This is a super interesting thing, right? So it's the dollar bills. You might see it. It's kind of maybe faded now, but you see a where'sgeorge.com thing. So you go to the website and you put in uh, the serial number of the dollar bill you have, and then you see potentially where it's been. So this became a really interesting data set to see how things move around and potentially how many diseases or people. I mean, it's a stretch to talk about that, but it was sort of the first. And, and there was a, you know, we talked about random walks. It was a, it was super diffusive in space. So there's big jumps in space, and then sub diffusive in time. Like it had this kind of different behaviors. But it basically was sort of a, you know, this generalized random motion model that they're able to apply here. This is the cell phone thing. They have a different story there. Um, Actually, I had a student in this class years ago who lived in a fraternity, and he used to get everyone, so I guess they all got paid for doing various jobs around the university, but he would get all their checks and uh, go and cash them in a bank downtown in $2 bills. Like, always he would request completely $2 bills, right? So, and then, so, there was a study that looked at uh, where $2 bills were in the, in the States, and there's this, this real hot spot of billing too. <laughs> <laughs> one kid who just thought this would be fun. <laughs> it just needed to be more of And it was him, it was totally him. <laughs> yeah, he worked on this, he worked. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was sort of like, I don't know why, you know, the, whoever was doing this thing, like, it was sort of a newspaper thing. I don't know why these two dollar bills are here, but they're pretty Well, um, okay, so uh, I had some people work on this, and this is something I've thought about for a long time. Like, how far away. You know, our places from other places in the world, given how we can move around now. Right? So, you're out in the desert, and it's a long time ago, and you don't have jet engines or anything. You know, the way you, as you walk away from your spot, uh, where you can get to in, in a, a time t grows like 2 pi r t, right? It grows linear. So, you're living in a two dimensional thing. You know, the amount of the, the sort of the scope of how far you can get, or how many places you can get to, grows as that dimension minus one. You know, if we sort of just moved off in a ball, we'd be able to get to a surface. But, you know, if you start in New York City, and you take planes, you know, you get to a lot of places, take cars or whatever you want to do, then you can really start to move and, and spread out. So there are, there's old work on this, looking at people moving around in cities with trains and buses and so on. Um, but it would be great to have this visualization when you go to a point, and you can sort of see how long it would take to get everywhere. Now, this seems like, so this is sort of fun, Jonathan Harris, our great hero is um, is back, so he's done. He had some fun with this. Um, it's just an interesting thing to work on. But Brockman, who I mentioned with the West George thing, that's exactly what they did here, essentially, to track, at least in theory, disease. I can't believe totally had this idea, but they, so if you've got a disease spreading around the world, you've got measurements of it, right? It's in this city, it's in this city, it's the caseload is whatever. Then. Um, from a sense, if you know, and you know the, how people move around with planes, right? We've got a pretty good, we've got that data. Then you should be able to kind of create something where you can kind of move around and say, you know, press on London, and it makes sense, right? So in terms of the times that these people got sick. Um, so, you know, the, do they call it geometry? Yeah, the geometry, right? So that eventually, you know, if, if it starts in London and then goes out and out and out, you know, the places that they'll get, uh, people will get sick and say, oh, you know, New York City will, will get hit, you know, at a certain time with that flight. Um, it'll take longer to get to the Tibetan Plateau, right? But, so you should be able, but if you then say, well, I think it's not a pile of water, it wouldn't work, right? It would all look wrong. Like, it got to these other places too quickly. So that's what they did here. I've got a few plots here. I'm just, that's what, you know, these simulations are 41 days. This is you know, so these are cities, and they're sort of arranged by actual time away from some center city in terms of travel. So that kind of looks like it makes sense, right? That this thing is propagating the right way. And if you, they have some examples here where um, you know this is something that's spread around the world. This is a just a simulation. Yeah. Uh, this is Chicago. So starting in Chicago, it looks right. It makes sense that this is where things are spread to. But all of these others are, you know, it doesn't make it, it, it there's a scramble looking, right? So somehow it's taking a long time to get to places that are very close to it and also reaching places that are seemingly far apart. But if you've got the right center, then the time taken seems to be about right. So that was a very clever thing. Yes. And that is maybe because Chicago is a pretty major airport hub. 
So, so it yeah, and it doesn't really matter about where you start, right? It's just that once you create that hub, then you put all the links out to the next places, and then the links, and then the links. So you, so you put Chicago down the middle of the map, and then you basically have radii of time, right. and you just put the cities, you just allot them, um, depending on how long it takes to, to get to them. What's interesting about that is because Atlanta is probably an even bigger airport problem in Chicago and it's going to scramble with Atlanta. Right, so it's much further on, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not even sure. Yeah. 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 But, right? It's not that far away to the world. Yeah. You know, Atlanta is going to get into South America faster. Oh, a little bit, right? For example, right? So it's going to start lining up. South America is going to start to get infected. I mean, if, it, if it's just sort of this thing, it just just travels out in a very simple way. So, super interesting. Uh, this is a great paper to work on. This has some beautiful results, I think. Um, Bagro, I don't know if this guy's seen any. It's uh, more about. It, there is migration in here, but it's also uh, community patterns, and it's different to the gravity model that Zip had. Um, just a different model, very simple model in the end, uh, but that's that's something to look at. Probably is. So I don't know if I need to talk about too many of these. There are you know, many more pages here. I'm talking too much. Um, this is early work on uh, multi-layer networks. This is kind of made up. I mean, Italy is obviously not made up, but um, you know, this this data is sort of real. But then this is sort of a fabricated communication thing on top, so it's a little sneaky. But the idea is power grid, communication grid on top, sort of an immune system type thing, maybe, you know, like you're having trouble here, or how do you start to reconfigure other pieces. Um, show that it could, you could have uh, two networks that look like they're pretty um, good, actually, like they're fairly resistant to things spreading on them, but if they're coupled in certain ways, the whole system can be then fragile. So this is opened up a whole bunch of work, it's been disputed a fair bit, and Paul Hines here actually said, no, I don't like it. <laughs> right, but, um, yeah. Okay. Doyle will talk about soon, robust it, this is the internet. Yeah. Oh, I mean, oh no, capital I. Uh, lots of other things, you know, this is what's called history, right? Lifespans of empires. Um, system robustness, this is human disease, if you like notebooks, this is, this is, I don't think anyone should do this actually, but it's, it's spread of. Um, uh, it's, it's, we'll talk about this later on in, in social contagion. It's not. not um, you don't have to worry about that one. Oh, this was good. Go, right? Right? It was a big deal. Yeah. If you're a Go fan or fan of computers destroying humans, then uh, this was a surprise. Right? It was a surprise. Um, you know, how cities are laid out, that's a big thing. You know, obviously, like creativity. That looks like it's an old work now. Uh, Yelp, I've had students work on that. TV tropes, Buff, which started because of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Great, great. Yeah. Uh, proverbs, we have one of the world's great proverb experts here. Wolfgang Leider was over in Russian and German language. He's a, I mean, it's just worth having to talk to. He's amazing, absolutely amazing. So he, he basically hunts proverbs like that. Like you might you know, go and collect mushrooms and um, book after book after book about it. Proverbs. And he just thinks like he looks at the collective words of like Abraham Lincoln and just writes about all the proverbs he uses. Okay. Uh, lots of things, lots of things, lots of things. Lots of things. Culturalomics, actually, we did this. This was a disaster. Eitan Pachanik was in this course. Um, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a difficult data, it's a, it's a beautiful data set. It should be great, but it's a great. It's full of science, actually, so you be very careful with that one. Controllability of complex networks, another controversial work, full of taxes, some of you might like that. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, missing data, very important. This is how uh, Cesar Hidalgo is very, his sort of main initial work, looking at how countries evolve in time within industry, right? And it's about their exports. So countries to start with might just export oil or you know, just some simple things like forest products. How do things change over time? Um, it's a bit of a dubious network representation there, but uh, you know, the basic idea is that over time you get further in the middle of this thing where you start producing things like electronics, 
who is more sophisticated than everything. So, there's an evolutionary story there. Oh, if, you're, if you're an economist and you like game theory, this is work by uh, my old colleague Duncan Watson and some others. So, there's so much done on prisoner's dilemma that it's just absurd. But this was a really interesting experiment where they actually came back to the same people once a day for 20 days and asked them to play prisoner's dilemma games again. And it didn't go completely to pieces. You actually just had people who would cooperate. Um, they would just cooperate, even though they were being burned, you know, like, right? They were actually losing things. They would continue to cooperate. Uh, and, and they asked them why, and they just said, because it's the right thing to do. You know, so this is the, this is the sort of thing that's very upsetting to economists, right? Because humans are not rational. Um, but maybe they, they kind of are in bigger picture ones, right? They're not selfish little Ayn Rand did I don't know. Words. Lots of things with words. Okay. Sorry. Tons of stuff. We actually did this one on Wikipedia, really great. Uh, okay, so you can look through those, <clears throat> you can come up with your own things. I miss. Okay? I'm just going to talk about some fun things. Alright, we did that. <coughs> Bless you. Or us. Okay. Okay. Okay, so. Alright, let's go back to this fundamental thing and I'll see if we can get through some of this. We can talk about um, talked about the data transition, right? We have this enormous amount of data coming out of all sorts of systems now, uh, particularly social systems, social technical systems, and so the game is on, right? It's just let's do good things, let's not be make a mess of it. Um, but uh, it's basic science again. We just we have to try and sort through it. It's very hard. It's difficult, hard, man. Vast volumes of data, but you know, increasingly they're about important things. So I I I find it's important to say this. Basic scientists describe plus explain, and there are great merits in both of these pieces, right? So um, and this is this is called the, the measure is the no. You know, it's like measurement is great, right? Now the dominant thing is an instrument that behaves like a physical instrument. It's tunable, it has these other things. And by itself, you know, that's an important thing to contribute. You know, we always like the quotes from the famous people. So he said some things that weren't right as well. Um, he also said, nothing new to be discovered in physics, right? Just better measurement. So uh, quantum would have been very disturbing. Chaos theory, totally alarming. So, um, but, you know, measurement, important thing. All right, I'll just go through this. There's a scope, there's a limit to what we can measure, right? So there's, uh, and this is sort of insane, but there's, uh, we can only see the, the, where the light's pouring through it is. Oh, right, we can't see outside of it. That's just, we can't do it. That's really cool. Uh, we kind of think we know how big it might be, and so on, the universe. And then alternate universes, of course, which is excellent for stories. This is really, really good material for stories. Um, and crazy theory, I suppose. Uh, and then the small stuff, yeah. So, and the string theorists are absolutely sad because they've developed a theory for something that can never be tested. I mean, bravo. Anyway, so, um, uh, I mean, it has to give rise to some stuff like that. Right, fine. But, you know, I did once have someone ask me, you know, do these things make musical sounds, right? I mean, this is. Which is fine. I mean, I understand what's going on, but I mean, the, 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 and it's a nice thing. Strings are fun. So, <coughs> with their little strings, they wobble, etc. So, <coughs> the branding kind of went the wrong way there. But this, you know, this is over time, right? It used to be we were just here, and we started to to move further out. But there are hard limits, which right, the problem here is the things we use to measure the things we're looking at. Smack the things we're measuring in the head, right? So, you know, it escapes as soon as you look at it. So that's really squirrely and messy. But this is just too far away. Unless you make wormholes or something, whatever you guys can do. Okay. So, uh, you know, this is a this is a, science is sort of a new thing in some ways. This kind of codification of science, and we've we've split ourselves in all these groups. But just this word, this is from Google Lang Grams, which I've said it's had some problems, but it's sort of a Basic vocabulary test the thing, you know, it's made up here. It becomes we're natural philosophers and so on, and everyone else was usually being a, a lawyer or a judge at the same time. This is what, this is what scientists do. Okay. 
mean, I feel I have to say that because I think we get confused about these things. So it's describe, explain, and then you have things like create and predict and all those pieces come afterwards. The basic science is just this thing. Okay, emergence. These are emergent pieces, right? So the small to the many. So let's talk about emergence. And that's a good place to get to this today. Right, so this is sort of moved around. This is just a wiki meaning, right? So emergence is, is the way complex systems and patterns arise out of, out of simple interactions from small things. Um, and it's central to the physics of complex systems, yet very controversial. And they're sort of matured a little bit because it's not really controversial. I mean, we have things like fluid dynamics where we have a hard story for going from micro to macro. Um, you know, we get hurricanes and so on out of water molecules that. that Clearly, don't have them inside them. Um, so, process where larger entities arise through interactions. This is this is a completely reasonable thing. It actually comes out of philosophy originally. Um, and the larger is, there are properties that the small ones do not exist. That's it, right? That's it. And that, but it's still, and that's cool, right? It's from, as I said, from a philosopher, this is 1875. Um, this is a remarkable thing. This is crazy, right? You look at a dollar bill. And it doesn't have a financial collapse in it, but it just doesn't, it's not there. Or a water molecule, it's not obvious that there'll be tornadoes coming out of it. Or whatever. Yeah. Um, this is, let me see if I can get this one to work. So this is actually from the BBC, and they don't like the video being shown, but uh, it's actually Strogatz on Radio Lab. There's some old Radio Labs, and I'll have a few of them. Fireflies are something that we have all loved as kids, right? Catching them in the backyard, putting them in, in a jar and watching them close. So we don't tend to think of them as anything all that mysterious. Well, they do one thing very nicely, which is flash on and off. That's all fireflies do, flash. But what interests Steve Strogatz, a mathematician at Cornell University, is that there are places in the world, not here, but in, in Southeast Asia, in Malaysia or Thailand, where fireflies don't just flash randomly, like we're used to, they somehow flash together. There are enormous congregations of fireflies along riverbanks. How many? It could be tens of thousands, tree after tree, extending for literally miles along the rivers, all flashing in sync like a Christmas tree, rows and rows of Christmas trees all wired together going off. And it's one of the most hypnotic and, and spellbinding spectacles in nature because you have to keep in mind it is absolutely silent. I mean, picture it. There's a river bank in Thailand in the remote part of the jungle. You're in a canoe, slipping down the river. There's no sound of anything, maybe the occasional, you know, exotic jungle bird or something. And you're looking and you just see... With thousands of lights on and then off, all in sync. Because no one knows. Because no one knows. There are literally ten theories. What seems to be clear, says Steve, is there is no one firefly that makes it all happen. It just happens on its own. Order materializes out of nothing. And that hasn't puzzled. How can order come out of, out of disorder? And this is what the creationists love to talk about. And it's because they don't understand, and neither do we. This, this is the big, big mystery of science. I think bigger than black holes or bigger than super strength. I mean, science has had hundreds of years of success since the time of Galileo and Newton from reductionism, from looking at the smallest parts, whether they're genes or atoms, whatever. That's great. We need to understand the individuals. But that's not enough. So that's, I mean, that last part is really an important thing. What Strogatz said, well, Strogatz is awesome. Um, so my story is I actually came to the US to work with Strogatz at MIT. I walked in the first day and said, so can you tell me where Steve Strogatz's office is? And the person said, call now. So I'm <laughs> uh, like, OK. So I wrote to him. To, he, he, did the, he did a terrible thing. He won a teaching award. He won the MIT-wide teaching award. And, there was a series of doing series of people who did that who um, you do not get tenure because you're not obviously into research properly. Right? So it's true. I mean, it's not just MIT. A lot of the big schools will actively look down on people who show any interest in teaching. <laughs> uh, that's the worst. Okay, but he loves teaching, and um, it's great. So, and you, if you haven't read his books, you should. He has a book on sync called Sync on Synchronization. And then he's written a lot of popular pieces now, just on math, a lot of math. He's writing on calculus now. 
anyway, so um, uh, when, of course the uh, David Attenborough piece is amazing because David Attenborough. Um, but anyway, that other lay from Strogatz is the right thing. Okay, so these pieces, right? Tornadoes, all these things—they're not found in. Uh, I don't know tornadoes are. It's air, but um, you know, emergence, right? These things. So somehow, fundamental particles, all these little bits. You know, we have this crazy thing about dark matter where we, that should go away at some point, and uh, you know, we we we've got stuff, right? Um, you know, we have this code that gives rise to us. We're still the brain is still a long way off, I think for us to really understand it completely. Um, all of these things, even you know, time, you know, gravity, right? We have a description of gravity, but no, we don't really understand it as much as we think we might. I mean, we have fantastic, beautiful theories there. But anyway, okay. Um, so all of these things, right? These are all examples. Aristotle, the whole is more than some of its parts. And uh, you know, uh, Anderson, who I mentioned way back, Think. Uh, so yeah, more is different. This is sort of the, the famous paper in complex systems because it's framing what happens as you get to a larger and larger scales. Just different. Not that it's more, it's just different. So uh, you know, various other places where this is talked about, right? The sort of emergence thing. So the markets, you know, potentially there are emergent structures here. This is higher. Um, these are decent words, right? Taxes, taxonomy, these are things that are opposed. This is growing order. You know, there's <coughs> things that are, think, and, and evolution can certainly produce hierarchical structures. It absolutely does. But um, decentralized ones are more nimble and uh, able to adapt. Uh, you know, once you've got, a, once you've got a, uh, something that you've, like a problem that you've solved well, and this is sort of the classic idea of, say, military, right? That's a very clean structure. Which is not true, it's never been true, um, really. But once you've got a solved problem, then you can really do it. You can think of maybe the way you structure a factory, you know, it's this hierarchical thing. Um, but then you, you need, you, you know, like startup companies to have this sort of thing, solving problems, being more adaptive, and, and the bigger companies will certainly kind of create these things within themselves. Uh, you know, this is an older thing now, but Dewey Decimal System, right? So Dewey opposed this, just said, this is how I think the world is, from an 1800s. Massachusetts point of view, versus something where you get lots of people tagging and putting little uh, bits of information in, and you get a, a better kind of cloud of ideas around something. Uh, Common, very famous, I used to have a computer called Common. Um, this idea Weber had, which is you know, the religion gives rise to capitalism, but sort of pointing out that this goes down to people, and then back up so into a micro, and back up to a macro story. Uh, you know, some people have had this. Uh, you can look up column, good things. This might be, we'll see how far we get, but I'm going to show you this little demo here. This is from uh, Nikki Case, who's, she's done lots of interesting things now. Um, this is based on this model of shelling. So, um, shelling, we'll come back to with, with uh, contagion and how things spread, but uh, he, he's, he did a lot of things just thinking kind of basically clearly about him, how people behave. Uh, this is from the 70s, the 60s and 70s. So he's, he famously made this toy model. Right? So toy models are incredibly powerful. We're going to talk about them more in, this, in the next section. We'll get to it. Um, we just have a few ingredients. It's very easy to understand. Everyone sees what the game is, and then you let it run. And you know, if it's a valuable model, then we start to see uh, collective behavior that we did not predict. Right? That was <coughs> isn't intuitive. And one thing, and I. I kind of want to say this over and over and over is that we're very good at understanding individual narratives. We're terrible at understanding group behavior. We just don't see it. It's very hard for us to understand. We tend to actually impose an individual narrative on top of a group thing. If it's group behavior, it's like, well, someone's in charge and you know they're the boss. It's just it's easy because we are individuals, right? So it's a it's a great failing for us. So let me see if I can get this thing to work. Okay, so the original model was uh, this is where the tipping point comes from. So it's about segregation uh, back in the 50s, or thinking about it at that time. And Schelling was you know, wor wondering about how this happens. And, this, and the story was that you know, this group of people, this group, they just don't like each other, right? And it's simple. It's very simple. This you know, group A does not like people with group B. Um, 
and so they will not live near them, they'll move away from them. It's an individual, individual kind of thing. And they all have the same view, basically. Um, it's a Sneetches story, right? If you want to Dr. Seuss version, right? Just down the lake, Sneetches. Yeah. Okay, so he said, all right, well, got a checkerboard out and put nickels and dimes down, I think. Just like scanned them around and then gave them simple rules. So if a, if a nickel had, you know, maybe three dimes around it, it would try to move. It would move randomly. So it could potentially be near the, uh, other nickels. And it, the thing that, he's, he, that he came up with was that they didn't have to be incredibly biased for global segregation to occur. So that's the big story that comes out of this, is you have rather modest and seemingly not particularly biased views of individuals or, or a distribution of them. You know, it could certainly be a distribution, you have some kind of hard, most people are very tolerant ones. Um, but you can get a global behavior that the simple story for it, the simple individual kind of narrative story is that these ones hate these ones and they hate them back, you know. But it could just sort of emerge from, uh, so, so this is a whole thing you can play with, right? So it's a drag and drop thing, and so um, they're slightly shapist, right? So they prefer being, so that it, it, there are different kinds of things. So this one will move, here they move with a third of their neighbors away, right? Less than a third away. So this one is unhappy. The neighborhood thing, I think, is based on the white age white. around you. White light, but this is Yeah. So neighborhoods were said, said to tip. They were said to tip. White people would move away, right? And, that was the, and that's where the tipping point comes from. Yeah. Gladwell is crazy, but that's um, OK. So this one, not happy. I don't know if I can count uh, that. Right? So, this one, in this case, cannot be made happy. If this one moves away, then, in fact, this one is unhappy now, too. Because at this point, they have, this one sees one out of two of their friends or neighbors is, is like them. So they, this one's happy. Um, OK, so you can start to play around with this sort of thing and try to you know, do your own little segregation thing. So you make them happy, right? So we can get them to be pretty. So now this one's happy, unhappy, move it over here. And so I'll do this with a something like this. So this is the uh, function of segregated, and I think we can start to right. So it starts to separate, and they don't have really strong biases. Is the point? Okay. I think there's another one here. So here we can move it, right? So we can move this level, right? So I move it less than. You know, so these are really tolerant ones, right? So they won't move much. They're happy. Uh, if we make it 50%, let's make it a new board. Right, so it's 50%, which is, you know, biased, but it's not. It's, it's not what it looks like at the end, right? It looks like these people really, really want to be by their, by their own, with their own team. And that's the story that everyone had kind of gone, because it's the... Yeah, so the, the thing with this collective behavior, you have to either, you know, I mean, in the past we've been able to do it with something like fluids, with equations and so on, you can get them somewhere, but more and more in simulations, and models. This tells a different, this gives us a little story. This doesn't explain how it all works in the real world, but it gives you a new narrative, a narrative that's about a collective behavior that was just not easily in our heads, and was not accessible. Really. We also, so they can be very biased. Right, and then they'll, then actually they can start to struggle because there's not enough room. They can't, it'll take longer perhaps, but you can see it's not, you know, it looks like this is sort of a stable, um, <laughs> slowly, okay, so it's starting to, you know, and you know, it depends how you do it, it's a sort of random movement of things. The percentage of this one, I think, up until this point was oh, this one I'm just setting, so it's kind of oh, the percentage G. Yeah, this is adapt. This one's adaptable, right? Well, um, <laughs> can you see? so so that's about fifty fifty. Oh, it's, you're right. Sorry, I kind of read myself. There's a fifty. Yeah, that's how oh, you're right. So. Um, you know, this is very biased, right? And then, yeah. But 
Okay, or maybe, maybe 33, let's take something like 36%. You might think that's about, that actually leads to, you can see the segregation just going on. So you're happy to have two thirds of people around you be, um, be different, and you still have. So yeah, you know, this is this is a very powerful thing to know. This one is the, oh, what's going on with that? Ah, oh, that's just that's just that. Okay, good. And then there's then there's madness here, right? Um, so you move. This is sort of a this is the Brooklyn thing, right? So if everyone's like you, you're gone. We actually wrote a paper on that, a hipster effect thing. So, uh, yeah, you copy, you, you imitate others, but at some point, if everyone's like you, then you're out of it. You, you, you'll change your, your pattern. Because you certainly don't want to be like everyone else. Uh, so, that one's a little, this one's a bit harder to think about, for sure. Like this is a more, much more complicated dynamic. And you, know, you can make it more, you can always make it more stable like this, but. You know, now they don't want to be, now they, they want diversity, right? They want some diversity. So they're not being a little more diverse. Then this, I don't know, you can do this later on, get them all in the big box of friendship. <laughs> it's a little weird because you have to kind of just move them slowly together. But you could strand them. That was stuck. That was weird. Um, <laughs> and, then, and, then, and there's the full thing, right? So you can play with all of this stuff. You can change the ratio so you can make a minority. Right, you can make a very small minority. Let's see what happens there. So this is a this this is a beautifully done um, example visualization. It's terrific. So I would encourage you to look around this. Uh, she has. So it's actually with by, this one was with by heart. You know her, right? She's done all these cool uh, math uh, YouTube videos, really, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, you can actually give her money. Yeah, uh, Patreon, which is a cool thing, right? So this is the most recent one. I just saw this: the evolution of trust, uh, fireflies. There you go. Right. So she's totally into this stuff. Um, so I'll, we'll have to play around with that one. I haven't played around with that one. Uh, so let's see down the list. Where's her? Where's her website? I think it's just. Yeah, okay, so there's a whole bunch of here. So, play around with those. Oh, simulating the world in a mojo. That's seems wrong, but uh, you gotta do it. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit more about these things on Thursday, and uh, then we'll get on to robustness, which is a super important, interesting thing. Why do things go bang? Well, sometimes. Right, people think about projects, send me ideas, see if you can team up. Give yourself a coding person. If you're not a coding person, let me post